So hello everyone again. Today we're going to go over Boolean Algebra Basics. So there are going to be these laws that are going to be very similar to regular algebra like commutative, associative, and distributive law. So we'll just go over those quickly and then there are some new laws that are specific to Boolean Algebra such as the AND, OR, or INVERSE. It's worth mentioning that for Boolean Algebra we will only be using two operands, OR, and AND. If you review one of the previous videos, I go over how AND and OR have their own truth tables, and so we're going to go a little bit more into detail here, and we're going to see how we can use that to simplify expressions. So let's start with, let's start with commutative law. This law states that no matter the order of the operation, the outcome will be the same. In other words, A and B is equal to B and A. Also, B or A is equal to A or B. So that's pretty straightforward. It's what we have in regular algebra. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that we're only going to use AND and OR because this way commutative law can be used all the time. As you know, negative signs will make it a little bit more complicated, but we have an alternative which, will I, which I will go over when we get to inverse. So now associative law is pretty similar, except that now it's the order in, of which you perform an operation. So for example, A and B inside parentheses and C is going to equal A and B and C inside parentheses. Same goes for OR. And the last law that we will be familiar with from regular algebra is distributive law. And distributive law is simply A and parentheses B or C will equal A and B or A and C. So that's mostly it for the laws that we are most familiar with. Now we need to look into the AND and ORs and what happens with the operands and what special conditions there are so that it can be easier on us. So let's start with AND. For AND, we have to imagine that we are always creating an output that if both variables are 1, then the output will be 1. Otherwise, 0. So let's look at some examples. If we have a variable named a and b, just like the previous examples, and we do a and a, well, there we know that if a is 0, it'll be 0 and 0, which will be 0. And, but if a is 1, it'll always be 1 and 1, which will always be 1. So basically, A and A will always be A. Following the same logic, if we have A and 0, we will always have 0. A and 1 will always be A. And now I'm going to introduce a different I wouldn't call it an operand, but it is something that we consider, and it is not. Not will mean that if a equals if a equals one, a not equals zero, and if b equals zero, b not equals one. So it's just the inverse. It's going to create, if it's a 0, it'll become a 1, and if it's a 1, it'll become a 0. So now that we know that, we follow the same logic that we used for a and a, and we apply it to a and a naught. Now, what will happen? We will always have a 0 and a 1, because there are only two options. So if you have a is equal to 1, then a naught will be equal to 0. But if a is equal to 0, then a0 will be equal to 1. And as we know, a and 
zero is always going to be zero. So that's a nice little pattern that we should know for Boolean algebra. Now let's go over or. So for or, the output is only zero when both variables are zero. So let's look at A or A. This will either be zero or one, and in both cases, we will end up with A. So basically, if A is equal to zero, zero or zero will always be zero. But if it, A is equal to one, we will have A one or one, which is one. So that's pretty nice. Now we have a or 0 will always equal a as well. Um, this is pretty straightforward. a is 1, we'll have one of the outcomes, so it's a 1. And if a is 0, it'll be 0 or 0, which is 0, which is a. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty good. Then we have a or 1, which will always equal 1, because we are just looking for one input, one variable, to be equal to one. And so no matter what a is, it'll always be one. And then finally, a or a not will always equal one as well. Because, again, one of those variables will always be one. And as we know, a or one is going to be one. And that's pretty much it for, for the OR. Now let's talk about the inverse. The inverse property is something that we already covered. It is going to be represented with NOT. We represent NOT by drawing a little line on top of the variable. So if we have A, A NOT is going to be this symbol right here. This will inverse any variable. So if it's a zero, it becomes a one, just like I explained before. Now there's this fun property that if you have a naught and you take the inverse of that, that will just equal a. If you think about it, since there's only two options, you go from zero to one, and then the inverse of one is zero, so you just go back to where you started. So let's start with b b and a or b a naught. So how can we simplify this and try to possibly find a solution? As you can see there's a common factor of b and because of our distributive property we can factor that out. So now we have b a or a naught. So that gets us a step closer. Now we're going to use an OR property. We know that A or A naught will always result in a 0 or a 1. So you're going to always have a 1 inside that OR, which means the outcome will always be a 1. So now we have B and 1. And now finally we're using the AND property of B and 1, which will always give us b. So our final answer will be b. That is the most we can simplify that expression. So now let's try a or b c naught parentheses or c b. So what is the first thing that we should notice? The parentheses. In this case, we know that because of the associative law, order of these operations does not matter. So what we really have is A or B, C not, or C, B. Now that we have this, we can see something that we didn't probably see before, which is the B has, we can factor out this B from the C. So now we have A or B and C naught or C.
and we go back to our or properties, we use associative law, and now we're going to use or properties to know that C not or C will always end up in a one. So we have B and one. And therefore, now that we know that B and 1 will always be B, we have our final answer of A or B. And that is the most simplified expression that we can get. So it's pretty straightforward, and once you get a hang of it, it'll be easier to start thinking in terms of ands and ors and nots. Once we go over some other properties and some other theorems, it'll become a lot easier to do way more complex problems. So yeah, that's all.